The government is awaiting the GDP performance for the second quarter before deciding whether to revise its 2021 growth target of between 6 and 7.5% as the economy is seeing signs of recovery in the current quarter, Banama reports. Senior Minister Datuk Sri Muhammad Azmin Ali says Bank Negara and the Ministry of Finance are currently looking at the details of the second quarter performance given that the ongoing total lockdown would have some effects on the economy. Azmin adds that the decision was one the government needed to take to ensure that it could continue to protect the people. He said that this year, there were signs of recovery in the second quarter as trade performance and foreign direct investments are coming in, reflecting the confidence level of foreign investors and that they will continue to invest. He cites the recent example of Austria's ATNS, which decided to invest 8.5 billion ringgit in Malaysia by setting up a new facility in Kulim High Tech Park Kedah to produce high-end printed circuit boards and integrated circuits. Asmin says BNM may announce whether there will be a revision of this year's growth target when it releases the 2Q GDP results. He adds that if the country could accelerate the immunisation programme and reach herd immunity, it would have a positive effect on economic recovery. MSM Malaysia Holdings is upbeat on its profitability path this year, despite expecting to miss its full-year production target of 1.3 million tonnes by a small margin. Group CEO Syed Faisal Syed Mohammed says the group expects demand to remain stable despite the re-implementation of the full MCO. He adds that demand can only start to go up with the concurrent vaccination programme. MSM posted two consecutive quarters of profit recently after two years in the red. The group also expects its utilisation rate in its Johor plant to double to 50% in the second half and 75% for its plant in Penang. The two plants were temporarily shut this year, the one in Johor for two months due to a boiler breakdown and the Penang one for two weeks due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Meanwhile, Syed Faisal also said that MSM will remain a listed entity even if the Federal Land Development Authority takes over its 51% parent, FGV Holdings. The High Court today allowed a nine-month extension of the restraining order on 15 of AirAsia X's creditors over its restructuring exercise. The application was allowed by Judicial Commissioner Ong Chi Kwan in an online hearing after 14 of the creditors had no objections to the extension sought. The one remaining creditor was agreeable to only a three-month extension. Ong ordered the airline to report back within six months over its proposed debt restructuring scheme. To recap, last October, a announced a debt restructuring scheme with unsecured creditors of the group entailing a restructuring of about 63.5 billion of debts to be reconstituted into an acknowledgement of indebtedness by AAX for a principal amount of up to 200 million ringgit. Petronas is said to be considering putting in a bid for a digital banking license, reports Bloomberg, quoting people familiar with the matter. Other names said to be considering a bid are Gunting, YTL Corp and the Sarawak government, according to the report. Some firms such as C and YTL have joined forces and plan to bid as a consortium. Other companies that have shown interest include Grab Holdings and Sunway. Bank Negara is planning to issue as many as five digital banking licenses, with final bids due by June 30th and the win is decided by end 2022. Malaysia joins Hong Kong and Singapore in opening up its banking sector to non-financial players to keep with the shift towards technology, non-cash transactions and online lending. Industry players can expect to see cost savings from the five-year National Korea Accelerator Plan amid plans for asset and infrastructure sharing among the different players. MCMC Chairman Datuk Fadullah Suhaimi Abdul Malik says the initiatives include the setting up of a shared parcel point network comprising pick-up and drop-off points as well as the sharing of postmen across different service providers. The implementation period is between 2021 and 2025. Another aspect of how the 
the initiative can help improve profitability is the revisiting of licensing framework for service providers, which Fadula says will allow players to be more focused and allow them to pay their deliverymen better. CityLink Express CEO Ronald Tan says greater collaboration between postal and courier network infrastructure would create better economies of scale. However, Ninja Van Country Head Malaysia Atim Halim says it is still too early to gauge the amount of cost savings from the initiatives. For consumers, Package is also aiming to improve the quality of service provided, especially amid the surge in usage of online shopping via e-commerce, which has resulted in the number of packages delivered per capita to double from 7 packages in 2019 to 14 packages in 2020.